Hi there. Welcome to an exciting new educational initiative designed to provide young athletes with the life skills needed to excel both on and off the field. It's called the All-Star Transition Program, and it's brought to you by the good folks at the Pigskin Parlor, an organization dedicated to promoting football through families and families through football. The All-Star Transition Program is a series of 31 25-minute video-based modules. Each module will cover a specific life skills area, like selecting a college, investing your money, and even how to choose a sports agent that's right for you. But let's not kid ourselves. Playing in the NFL is a long shot. The odds are something like 10,000 to 1. So with that in mind, one of our modules takes a look at alternative careers in sports. With help from the New York Giants, we're going to give you a sneak peek of that module right now. And that's what a trainer generally is there before the players, and we leave after the players leave. During the season, we arrive about 6 a.m., 6.15, and we get ready for our treatments. Treatments start at 6.30, where we see all the injured players. During this time, we also start our taping schedule, when we tape and, and basically uh, bandage and brace any players that may need that type of service for practice. Uh, we generally go on the field about 10 o'clock for a walkthrough, and practice follows to about 1. Uh, we're on the field watching for injuries, working with some of the injured players in a rehabilitative setting. When we get back, we eat a quick lunch and have another treatment. Uh, the players go to meetings shortly after. And uh, that's the time we catch up on our injury reports, pack for road games, administrative type work. And then after meetings, they'll come back 4, 4.30 for one more treatment. Uh, we'll see them, and uh, players generally are out of there by 5, and we'll spend another hour or so cleaning up and getting ready to go home. So it's a long day, but uh, again, very worthwhile. You know, it's a big deal to me to be able to, to, to be a good example, not only to the kids, but to the, to the grown-ups out there as well, you know, and uh, just to do my best to, to, you know, I guess live a good life or whatever, but, but just to be a positive uh, role model for the kids and, and just do the right thing, uh, you know, whether it be after a win or after a loss, just to, to be positive and, and uh, you know, just be thankful for the opportunity I do have. There's no way in the world I'd be able to compete on this level if I didn't have some kind of education, wasn't able to do some kind of, you know, figuring things out and, and, and the way things are in school, you know, and the, your tests and, and the quizzes and stuff. And, you know, in high school and college, you go into a test and if you're unprepared, then, you know, you, you're not going to, you're not going to do well. Just like in a football game, if you go into a football game unprepared and you haven't studied your plays, you haven't studied uh, film, haven't done your homework in a sense, you know, you, you set, you're setting yourself up to fail. And I think just education in itself, um, has helped in order to be able to figure out the stuff we go through because we probably have 15 to 20 defensive fronts, probably that many coverages, and uh, plus you see see different things every week from from different teams, and so you know there's a lot of studying goes into the game of football. The first team I was on, I was I was too big for that team, so we found another team and. We only had like 12 guys on that team, so everybody got a chance to play. And, and from there on, you know, I was I always tried to, to be the best at what I did. And I always wanted to be, I always wanted to be a leader. I, and, you know, I never wanted to be second to anyone. So I think I was inspired by that. And once I got to high school at a different level and people were better than me at that time because I was so young, I just, I just had to wait and be patient, and I knew I would get my chance. And whenever I got my chance, you know, I started on the bench and, as a freshman because there were older guys, and when I got my chance, I showed them that I could play at that level, and, and I went on to have a great career in high school, and, and the same thing happened for college. And, you know, it's just, it's just being patient, doing what, it, doing what it takes, you know, to prepare yourself for when a coach calls on you, you're ready to play. And I think that if if you can understand that and don't let your ego get involved in, in playing, you know, wanting to play, you think you're great and you should be playing, but hey, when the coach calls on you, you should always be ready. And I think I prided myself on, hey, always knowing what to do. I may not have gotten every rep, like, you know, the first string guys, but I knew what they were, they were doing, what the plays were supposed to do. And when I got my chance, I shined. Oh, who else wants to switch the number? Cool, everybody. If you can have an I can attitude, 
you you won half the battle and you're you're halfway there to your goal. Even though guys don't want to be role models in my position, we are. We're we're the guys that are in front of the cameras. Uh, teenagers look look up to us. Little kids look up to us. When you go outside, that's what they see. You're you're at a superstar status. Even though even though you don't think you are, because you're in front of that camera and because you know people are looking at you on TV, they put you on a pedestal already. And I think that you know we got to be aware of that. My main concern is the players. I want the players to do well. I want them to be good people. I want them to represent our organization well. So that's what I really like about football. I like working with the players. Strong communication skills, uh, verbal and written, are, are very important. You're not, you're not going to succeed in this business unless you can communicate with people. Um, a lot of times you're in a lot of pressure situations. You have to be a quick thinker. You have to make quick decisions, and those quick decisions have to be the right decision. Um, those, those are two major, major things. Decision making and communication skills are very important for a successful career in, you know, in sports. I just like knowing the fact that I, you know, I get up every morning and my goal is to go out and create some change, make a difference. Um, just working with these professional athletes, knowing that, knowing the power they possess, uh, being in the spotlight of the public all the time, and knowing that I can uh, not force them to do something, but kind of, I'm the person, I'm the go-between person. I'm the person who uh, can create some op opportunities for them to go out and make a difference in our communities. My best advice would be there's many opportunities in the field of sports, not just from the equipment standpoint to the coaches standpoint. There's a lot of different fields such as public relations to the marketing standpoint to the, even the computer services standpoint. I think uh, every boy's dream is to play in a major sport from football to hockey to baseball, but as you grow and find out how tall you'll be or how big you're going to be, the older you get, you finally realize that, you know, I'm not exactly going to be a major sports star, so you kind of choose your aspects a little bit and focus on a different part, let's say the equipment side of it, or let's say the public relations side of it, or even the coaching side of it. Uh, I, my goal is to be a head equipment manager in this league. I like dealing with the people. I like dealing with the players. So I think this is a perfect job for me.